David here with Fig Boot on Pens, back again with another fountain pen review. Lately, a large number of the pens I've brought you are more on the high end of the price scale, so today I thought I would come back down to earth a little bit. Uh, I'll discuss price a little bit later, but I have for you a pen that retails for a little over $100, and that is the brand new pen from the Russian brand Bennu, which is the Tessera. What I'm going to do today is go over the parts and features of the Bennu Tessera, talk about what I care for and what I don't care for. I'll show some measurements, size comparisons, and provide a writing sample. Uh, thanks go out to the good folks at Bennu for providing this pen for review. Uh, as I mentioned, Bennu is a brand based out of Moscow, Russia. Uh, they came onto the Western pen scene around three years ago and, and really have consistently introduced new and unique designs. I feel it's safe to say that Bennu pens can be rather polarizing. Uh, they have a large number of pens with kind of glittery and sparkly material, which some people love, and others not so much. Uh, I'll admit that I'm not in all of their designs and materials work for me, and that's okay, but I can appreciate that they're a company who isn't afraid to try new things. If you want a pen dedicated to the art of tattoos, Bennu has it. If you want a pen in the shape of a parrot, Bennu's got you covered. If you want something a bit more traditional, but with some flair, they have that as well. The model I have for you today is their most recent release called the Tessera. And while it has some personality, it's not as far out there as some of the other Bennu models. It arrives in this box. Uh, and then on the inside, we have some use and care instructions. And there is some shredded paper to help protect the pen in shipping. And in this sleeve, we have the pen. This is the Bennu Tessera. A Tessera is actually a small block of stone or tile or glass or other material used in the construction of a mosaic. There are a number of famous Russian artists who specialized in mosaics, and some Russian churches constructed during the Byzantine era contain some extraordinary mosaics as well. Now, as a quick aside, I've mentioned this previously, but I grew up in San Diego, California and lived there for most of my life. One of my favorite places to visit is an art installation called Queen Khalifa's Magic Garden in Escondido, which is a few miles north of San Diego and was created by the renowned artist and sculptor Nikki de Saint Fall. Uh, the piece is full of mosaics and totems. Uh, you can see here, each of the pieces are comprised of different types of tessera. There is glass, there's tile, there's stone. Uh, it's just a really cool place. If you ever visit the area, I would highly recommend stopping by for a look. It's an incredible piece of interactive art. Okay, back to the Tessera pen. Uh, it is available in a number of different colors. There is an amber, a turquoise, amethyst, garnet, and then this model here is the blue quartz. The pen is made from a translucent handmade resin. Uh, the distinguishing feature of this model is the block tile pattern encompassing the cap and the barrel. The outlines of the Tessera actually give this material an extra layer of dimension. For this blue quartz model, the design helps accentuate the silver and many different shades of blue in the material. While most of the pattern is comprised of squares, I like that it also includes several rectangular shapes occupying the space of two or three squares. I like that variation. Just like mosaics in real life, the tessera are not always uniform in size. Uh, I also like the end of the cap on this particular model. The coloration on these pens will vary from model to model, so I wouldn't expect them all to be like this, but I care for the blue showing through the top of the slightly rounded cap. The depth of color is pretty cool. The clip is attached by this wide silver colored band. Uh, the clip is very functional. There is enough play here to use it in either a thin breast pocket or thicker jeans pockets. The cap angles up until the end, until it reaches this pseudo cap band, uh, which is a portion basically devoid of design encircling the cap. Uh, on it, it has the name of the company, Bennu. Uh, there is an angled step down to the barrel, which tapers down at a fairly even angle until it reaches the slightly rounded end. The cap unscrews, and underneath we have a number six sized Schmidt steel nib. And then here's a look at the plastic feed. 
there's not a large amount of companies out there using Schmidt nibs. Uh, this particular one is abroad and I find it performs very well. Uh, you'll see in the writing sample, but I find it to be very smooth and lay down a healthy line of ink. The section begins with a bit of a flare, with the most narrow portion of the section being right at around 10 millimeters. It's a bit thin for my personal taste, but I do find it to be comfortable, even for longer writing sessions. Uh, the section angles up until you reach the plastic threads. Then there's a medium sized step up to the remainder of the barrel. I find the tesserae to be plenty long enough to use unposted. The cap does post and it does post securely. And while I feel posting the cap doesn't throw off the balance or back weight the pen, I can't say I'm a particularly fond of the posted look. It looks a little bit mushroom-ish. So I personally prefer to use this pen unposted. This is a cartridge converter pen. It accepts standard international cartridges and a converter is provided. The Bennu Tessera is available from a number of retailers and sells for $120, which I feel is a reasonable price for what you receive with this pen. I mentioned it at the top of the review that Binu pens can be polarizing. Um, I have to say that this model here is probably my favorite of the many which I've reviewed. I could see myself adding this pen to my daily carry rotation. Um, I like the color and the shading, and it adds some personality without being over the top, which some Binu pens can be. Um, I care for the patterning throughout the pen, and this bold nib performs very well, as well as being a reasonable price overall. So now it is time for some measurements, size comparisons, and a writing sample with an ink that is not only available from a rather unique source. Here we go with some size comparisons for the Bennu Tessera. Here it is with a Pilot Metropolitan, a Lamy All-Star, and then a brand new model just released this week from Le Bon, which is their Flame model. And then in regard to some other pens, here it is with a Pilot 823, a Pelican M200, and then finally an Aurora 88 Black Mamba. And I'll be reviewing this in the near future, but just take a look at that scaling that looks just like a snake on this pen. It's pretty cool. In regard to some uncapped comparisons, this is what it looks like with the All Star and then the Pelican M200, and then finally the Pilot 823. So here we go with the writing sample for the Bennu Tessera. This is a bold stainless steel nib. And the unique ink I said I was using today is from actually from Mont Blanc, which is Mont Blanc BMW Blue. This is what the color looks like, uh, and it is a representation of the BMW's company colors of their blue and their logo. Uh, and this ink is only available, well, I have seen it on eBay as well, but uh, it's not available from normal pen stores, but if you go through the BMW store, their kind of official US store, uh, then it is readily available. And it comes in uh, this bottle right here, and it's a nice solid blue. Uh, here it is in comparison to something like Robert Oster Carolina Blue. Uh, and then there's even Kobe number 17, which is somewhat similar, but doesn't have the, uh, the sheen that the Kobe does. So in regard to the rest of the writing sample, I find this broad nib to be very smooth. Uh, 
It's one of the smoother broad nibs that I've ever tested before. Um, and it lays down a decent amount of ink. Now you're not gonna get lots of flex out of here. You can get a little bit, but as I said, for a broad nib, it lays down a decent amount of ink. In regard to reverse writing, it's a little scratchy, but does lay down an extra, extra fine line. And in regard to some fast writing, there's no issue whatsoever. So there you have the Bennu Tessera. I think it's an interesting new addition to their lineup and something worth checking out. So until next time, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later.